All right, welcome to the NCPA National Championships here. And we have the University of Akron Zips taking on Northeastern University Huskies and Matty Marshall alongside Dave Pando. And this should be an interesting matchup. So now, Pando, you were in the pits for Akron. What do you think they're gonna do off the break? You know, I got a little inside tip that they might be doing a big snake run off the break. I'm okay. really excited to see it. Well, hey, you want hey, if you want to make a statement, do something crazy off the break and push, you know, push the advantage that you can try to create with that with the gun shift. Let's see, and they are able to push aggressively. Look at this, all the, way, all the way down past the 50 yard line, able to get all the way onto Univer uh, Northeastern University's side of the field. So all the guns should shift to him, and that might loosen things up for Akron on the Dorito side. I don't know if the Dorito side knows that he is in Snake 4 already. If he comes on the inside, it's gonna nail that Dorito I guy. I don't think anybody knows he's in <laughs> Snake 4 right now because the back corner bunker for the Huskies is just completely out of his, uh, way, leaning way outside of his bunker right now. The back corner bunker on the Snake side of the field for the Huskies. But as soon as the Huskies find out that Akron has a guy on past their 50 yard line, man, that guy has to die. So looking for a big, big bunker move coming here on the Snake side potentially. Yeah, and you know, no one on Akron is really protecting Josh Boytush either. Oh, he just, just got a kill oh. off the Dorito side. Yeah, so Boytush gets a shot cross field, but then he gets taken out. So that's going to loosen up things for the Huskies over here on the snake side of the field. They are in the driver's seat on this side. But it looks like Akron is making moves on that Dorito side. They're in the 50-yard line. Dorito, their top portion of your screen. Again, these teams, they want to get into the red zone. That's the, those are the best bunkers on the field. And that's the whole point of the game. You must play aggressively in paintball to win games. It looks like Roberts getting pinched out here, number 28, for the Huskies. And he gets taken out. So nice job by Akron getting on the board right away here. And Panda, like you said, man, that was some good inside tip right there. They're able to get a body all the way, and they didn't do it stupid. Mm -hmm. He went smart, made a crisp move into the snake, bumped up smart, stayed low, kept his stomach on the ground, kept his feet down, did exactly textbook how you need to do that on the snake side. And then he got up here and he didn't go crazy. Mm -hmm. He didn't do anything insane. All he did was just wait, pause for a moment, listen to his coach, listen for the guns, pop up, cross field, he got a shot. Now he got dinked out, but because all the guns shifted to the snake side, able to make up all the way, you know, they were able to make that move to the Dorito. So let's check it out. Here we go. There's Akron, able to get in there. Look at that perfect, perfect crisp move. And keeps going, doesn't they, stop. Yeah, they didn't even have any idea, Pando, that he was even in there. Yeah, which was a great job on Akron to sort of shut down the snake side and keep everyone from watching the big move down the snake. Yeah, so nice job. They go up one to zero. Yeah, the zips. Yeah, the zips looking really good right now. So. And, uh, you know, Pando, you, you played a lot of college ball, played here. Um, you know, was Ohio State you played for? <laughs> no, <it's> Ohio <laughs> University, Matty. Come on. A little bit of point of contention with me and Pando. He's a good friend. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're one of the better players on the team. You were the captain. It's just so cool to see these college kids come out here and organize these teams and really compete at a very at a high level out here. Yep. And it's, it's just it's really cool to see. Who would you say, other than Cal State, are the favorites this year, Cal State being the returning champions? Um, I'm going to go with Tennessee just because they have always been really consistent. And, you know, you always see them on Sunday. I know all these guys, when asked, who are you playing, they say Tennessee and they kind of you know, put their heads down. They're afraid of them. Yeah, Tennessee, they always look good. And we have the third member of our broadcast team, Kristen Kenny. She is down on the sidelines. Kristen, what's up? Well, guys, you can see the difference between the rookie teams and the veteran teams out here. You see the zips. They're yelling. They're all in unison, chanting and yelling out those codes. So definitely more vocal in this game. Well, communication, thanks, Kristen. Communication, it cannot be understated or overstated how important communication is. And exactly, the, the better teams, it doesn't matter what level of play we're talking about, college ball, professional, it doesn't matter. If you're not talking and communicating, it's not just, you know, communication is not just talking, it's listening to, processing the information, and then having that affect your own game. So here we go on your screen right now as Akron Zips able to get it looks like they shot a guy off the break. No, they did. Yeah, there he goes. There Finally got that shot in that center 50-yard line bunker up the center. But great, great move by Northeastern, too, to put the guy up into the X to really shut down that snake side off the break, and he did it. He made a shot. You know what I like, though, is that we're starting to see a little bit more aggression out here. You don't really see it typically in the beginning as the teams are, are starting to figure out the field and, and really you know just get used to playing at this level against these teams. And uh, we're starting to see some aggressive moves already, which is a good yep. thing. Well, Akron's got something to prove. You know, they didn't play Class A last year. They were a double-A five-man team, and this is their first year really stepping up and trying out this X-Ball format, and 
They got the first win. Looks like they're going to be okay. Yeah, so they went up 1-0. And, you know, it's a 20-minute match, 10-minute halves. Highest score at the end of regulation takes the victory. And these teams, you know, playing multiple games today on different fields. But this is the showcase field right now. And now move made by Northeastern to get into snake one. And that snake is really makeable. I, I like this snake layout. It's a very playable snake layout. I think we're going to see a lot of moves made on this field. Though we haven't really seen guys get past snake two. You know, that orange section of the snake that you're looking at right now. And then the red section, that 50 yard line structure, that's right in front of them. Not a big gap between snake two and snake three. So as these teams start to get uh, used to this field layout and used to, you know, whatever plays they're running, here we go, big move. You're going to start to see the reins loosened up down here, and Flanders makes a very nice, nice crisp move down over here. Takes then, a couple from his own team, yeah. but that's okay. <laughs> hey. you know, as long as you get the win. Hey, as long as there's <laughs> one body alive, we yeah. all, we'd always say that. Hey, just if it's chaotic, just have one, just one guy. All we need is one guy alive to hang the flag, and we'll get that point. So, big Addy going in for the flag hang here. Addy's a great guy. Yeah. So here we go. Let's take a look at this here on the replay as Flanders able to make that. Oh, Ooh, no, nice. no one's safe out there. <laughs> what is that, dye paint? Yeah. <laughs> <Dye> paint. <laughs> so nice job by Akron going up 2-0 to zero here against Northeastern. Now, what would you say, you know, Pano, you've played a lot of college ball. You've led one of these teams out here. What would you, what sort of mentality, what would you say to your boys when you're getting ready for the championships? Well, you know, what's great about college paintball is that you're playing for, you're not just playing for your team, you're playing for your school. You know, and what I used to always motivate my guys is how cool is it going to be when we bring that trophy home to Ohio or to Akron or whatever it is to bring that home to your school, get in the front page of the newspaper. You know, they, when you do something great for your school, they take care of you. Maybe get some more money for the program. That's nice, too. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice, too. We're going to be right back after this. Do not go anywhere. And we are back, so two points and four minutes down so far. Six minutes and nine seconds remain here in the first half. And we got about 35 seconds before the start of this next point. Akron's been playing pretty aggressive. You think they're going to continue with that, or you think they're going to change it up a little bit? Oh, no, I absolutely think they're going to keep being aggressive because it's working for them. I mean, look, they're up two to nothing. This is their Class A debut. You know, they're getting the butterflies out and really making a statement here, game one. Now, what do you, what do you, what do you know about Northeastern? You played, you know, like I said, in this league for a long time. Did you ever play against them? Yeah, we did. Um, to be honest, they were never really, you know, um, they they never really were a Sunday team. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were always a team that you, you had to look out for. You couldn't let your back down at all when you played them. Yeah, well, you want, and that's the mentality you want to head into every game with here. Let's look at the breakout on the left-hand portion of your screen. It's Akron and then Northeastern getting chopped up, trying to get over here on the snake side. Oh, and starting to lose bodies off their back line as well. So just three players left alive for Northeastern right now. And Akron in the driver's seat, making moves. So look at that. They had a, a really good strategic breakout. Heavy guns off the break, and then immediately after get a couple kills, get into those important spots in the orange section of the field and then try to advance to the red. Here he goes, listening to his coach, makes that move. Not a lot of guns shooting at him, so he should be able to giddy up all the way down the side of the field. There's only one guy left. Northeastern's been doing really good off the break. Their, their lanes have been on. They've shot at least one guy every game, I think. Well, this is a, this is huge for them. They, you know, paintball, game of momentum. Roberts here pushing his advantage on the snake side. You do not want to go down three points. It, you go down three, four points, and you really start to get mentally beat down. And statistically, it does not look good for teams when they go down three points. So Northeastern finally getting on the board here. Which is perfect timing for them. Like I know you always say paintball is a game of momentum. Mm -hmm. And if they would have lost that point, they would have you know, all wind out of their sails. But now they came back. They got in Akron's heads a little bit. And let's check out this replay here, Pando. Is you know, real smart play. They know they're up a ton of bodies. And at that point in the game, you don't want to do anything stupid. If you go up two, three bodies, all you really need to do is start to combat communication, where the last guys left alive, and then isolate them 
and then make moves when they're not shooting at you. Because if there's if you're only looking at two guns, two, three guns, and you have five players left alive, well, those three guys can't shoot at five players. Mm -hmm. And so you, that's when you just got to slow it down a little bit, use that advantage, and then aggressively and smartly push up the field. And that's what Northeastern finally did. And so they're able to tie it up, or not tie it up, they're able to finally get on the board here. So the score is two to one. You know, we haven't really seen a ton of aggression on the Dorito side so far. It's been pretty much all the snake. That's true. And, you know, it seems like the teams are finding that 50 Dorito a minute or two in. It seems like it's easy to move up there later in the game. But off the break, you're right, it's been all snake side. Yeah, but this snake side's really playable. Yeah. And but the, but that's the thing though is that when the guns shift to that snake side, that's when your aggressive players on the on the D side really need to start getting up the field. We haven't really seen that a lot so far, and I think that if I were watching in these teams and scouting, and I was on you know one of the teams that's going to be playing coming up here as we move through this that's tournament, Liberty uh, University yeah. Flames going to be taking on Florida Gulf Coast University uh, Eagles next. I, that's what I, one of the things I'd be looking at. I'd be like, wow, people aren't really utilizing the Dorito side very much. Yeah, take people off guard and, you know, make that big move off the break. And then, you know, if your team has got your back, you can capitalize, no problem. All right, so also it looks like Akron, man, they got a ton of guys on their team. <laughs> it looks like they have a roster of like 45, 50 guys. I think it's a Midwest thing. You know, we just bring everyone. Yeah, just bring the army. Yeah. And uh, the Huskies, and they got a decent roster too, as opposed to, say, Texas A&M, who's only running with five, five guys, guys, but they won. So here we go on the split screen breakout. Northeastern on the left-hand portion of your screen. Ooh, big big move. move, yeah, big move all the way into the red zone. He's got players behind him too, though. But like we were talking about, a body dies for Northeastern off that Dorito side. So all the aggression is going to be over here on this snake side of the field, countering the move. Akron able to get into snake one, though still better field position for Northeastern right now. Yeah, Boytosh is really, he's an aggressive kid, and he's fighting aggression with aggression right now, which is how you gotta, you gotta win paintball games. Oh, absolutely. You cannot let the other team dictate the pace of the game. And, you know, Northeastern really wanting to tie it up here. He's listening to his coach, and you can see there on the left-hand portion of your screen there, and he's got a back player. Look at his back player, he's got his head up there. He's gotta, I was gonna say, gotta get that gun rolling, man. You gotta be careful. If your head is out, your gun might as well be out too, and rolling. Yeah, you, can, you can look and shoot at the same time. Doesn't look like he's taking a lot of heat in there. Yeah, but he's taking something to Dorito side maybe. Yeah, but look at this now. Even though Voitosh in really good position, uh, or I was gonna say Voitosh is in good position for Akron, but then oh, they lost guys. Yeah, though. Northeastern loses two bodies out of their bunker for no reason. So it's gonna be up to number three for Northeastern, and it's uh, that's Greg Balasare in here. So Balasare is gonna have to, he's gonna have to get some kills out of here. You know, right now you're looking at Voitosh bottom left hand portion of the screen and he's playing pretty conservative but it's because he's got a back guy watching his back oh make it alive all right he's safe now it's a three on two Akron up on bodies oh big Ooh. kill for Northeastern taking out the snake now we got a two on two let's see who can there it is looks like Northeastern's gonna take this point well Northeastern's in much better field position right now as they have the 50 Dorito and on the snake side as well. So even though they lost two guys and they lost two back players for no reason, Northeastern still able to take this point and tie it up against Akron. What happened to Akron? Well, I think that big snake move on Northeastern sort of kept them from really, you know, playing as aggressive as, as they could have on mm -hmm. the snake side. Um, but Akron really dropped the ball there. They should have capitalized. Oh, well, the ref checking a gun out. That's always not good to see. But let's check out this replay here. So that's Voitosh in the snake for Akron, and he gets torn apart cross field by that 50-yard line Dorito. Looked like he got a little angry at his coach. See when he comes off, you can always tell by players' body language. You don't even need to hear what they say. Anytime you get shot and then immediately look to your coach, maybe a little bit of miscommunication there. Well, their coach, the coach for Akron is Mike Gilbert, who's actually the owner of the field that most of the teams from Ohio all play at TPA Paintball. Mm -hmm. So I'd be careful when you yell at him because that might come back at you and <laughs> he might come home with you. You're like, well, you used to be able to play for free, but it's going to be 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when you screamed at me in the snake? Yeah, so the score is all tied up at two apiece here. Three minutes to go, just about three minutes to go here in the first half. It's a good game. Yeah, this is a good game. Did you expect to see this game, or did you think that Akron was going to run away with it, or do you think that Northeastern was going to step up? Well, I knew Akron's confidence was up. I mean, I, I know the guys from back home and they're you know they they were pumped they i know they play a lot of paintball 
but I was nervous for them. I was glad when they took those two points. Well, maybe Chris McKinney's got something for us. Kristen, what's up? Well, Akron's coach seems to be a little frustrated. He says they're playing individually, not as a team, so they've got to work on the communication, get out there, play more team ball, and for, uh, prevent from dying out in the bunkers, guys. <laughs> Well, the thing about that's that's very true, though, is that in order to play team paintball, you have to communicate with yourselves. And when dynamic moves are made that kind of throw a little monkey wrench into the plan that you had, that's what happens sometimes, though, especially when you got inexperienced players. If you have inexperienced players who haven't been in a ton of high level paintball games and had all that experience with chaos happening out there, if you get a big move that happens all the way to the 50 yard line, a lot of times you're doing damage control. Everyone switches their gun over. No one's talking to each other right at that particular point because everyone's trying to get a shot on on that guy who made that bold move, and then things start to fall apart, and that's what happened. So here we go on the breakout, looking at Northeastern again, left-hand portion of your screen now on the flip side, Akron able to make it into Snake. Man, they've, they've been doing that all game long. But Northeastern did get their G off the break on the Dorito side. Pretty much every point, their lanes are on. Oh, yeah. major penalty for Northeastern, though, off the no, center. I think it was a minor penalty. Saw a yellow flag, and you know, minor penalties signified by those yellow flags being thrown in the air. So frustrating turn of events for Northeastern as they looked like they were going to be in the driver's seat, like you said, Pando, after they got that kill off the break, and they lose another body off that Dorito side. So right now, it looks like Akron going to try to to go up one here. Come on, Patron. Go do some work. There it is. Point for Akron. Yeah, so Patron number 88 for Akron, able to get there in the snake. So it looks like four bodies left alive for, yeah, disaster for Northeastern there at that point as they get that minor penalty. I wonder if this is going to shift their momentum back to Akron. I think it might. So Todd hangs that flag up, and let's check out this last kill. Patron in the snake. And facing, I don't think he shot him though. Somebody else did. Yeah, he's he's you know he's playing smart in there. He's, he, they have the high bodies. You don't need to ride or die at that particular point. But Northeastern ride and dying out of that back corner bunker, and unfortunately for him, it was uh, Greg Balsari, and he ended up getting taken out. So, looks like Akron's going to take the lead here, three to two. It's good to see Greg playing. I guess uh, last weekend at practice, he dove on his tank and bruised all of like. The whole right side of his rib cage is one giant bruise. Really? He's hurting right now, but I mean, again, you only get this shot once a year for college paintball, so these kids, whatever it takes. Yeah, fighting through injuries, and we're going to be right back after this with the conclusion of the first half. See you in a second. And we are back here, Central Florida Paintball in Lakeland, Florida. I'm Maddie Marshall alongside Dave Pando. And we are watching Northeastern take on Akron. And Akron up 1.3 to 2 with two minutes to go here in this first half. What are you seeing out of these two teams so far, Pando? Well, I'm seeing consistent snake play by Akron and very consistent shooting off the break from Northeastern. So we'll see which one is going to get the best in this match. And I almost want to say I want to give Akron the uh, the aggressive award, mm -hmm. but Northeastern they've been throwing some uh, so throwing some blows too. So you know with the yeah, man paintball you have to if you're not playing aggressive you're not playing paintball like it's supposed to be played. Now, here we go on the breakout. I like so, the move by Northeastern playing that center tower. But they're just getting destroyed on that Dorito side, man. I'll tell you what, the Dorito side has been problematic for teams so far in this tournament. And really interested to see as we move on throughout the day and throughout the competition if people can figure out the mystery of the Dorito side. Because, man, we haven't really seen much paintball being played over there at all. It's been all snake side and all center. Minute and 30 seconds to go here. Northeastern making a move into the snake and dropping bodies, though, left and right. Only two players left alive for Northeastern. Again, on the Dorito side, Ekans found a way to really shut it down. Oh, and they lose another one. <laughs> we got some doubled up in the Dorito action for Akron. Yeah, Michael Sanders getting taken out. One guy alive, I think Akron's gonna take this point. Well, especially, I mean, you, you're the only player left alive. It's Roberts and the Snake here. And, man, if you're Josh Roberts, if you're the only guy left alive and you're in the Snake, it's gonna hurt. And here it comes, here comes the pain train. Oh, yeah, that, 
Justin Politi Ooh. taking him out. Yeah, so nice job by Justin doing what he needed to do. And as soon as he figured out that the last player left alive for the Huskies was in the snake and on and, and you know basically just laying down. He got uh, on his horse. That's yeah, that's he gets on his horse, goes and takes him out, runs him down. So just having fun out there. And here, feeling the paintball. Yeah, that was the replay right there. So nice job by Justin. And it's that's what you want to see, man. I want guys dropping that hammer. If I'm the coach of a team. Make the other team respect you. And if you get a chance to run somebody down and put it on them like that. So let's take another look at this replay here. You're gonna look at the kill. It's Justin coming from the inside. So at the top portion of your screen and those yellow bunkers right there. It's gonna be quick. And then he's gonna be coming in from the right, streaking from that center of the field. And just, you know, you can't, it's, it's, it's almost impossible when you're on your face in the snake and then boom, look at that, nice mm. job comes and seals the deal for that point. And that's what you want to see. So Akron going up here by two against Northeastern with just 40 seconds to play here in the first half. So Northeastern still not out of this game. It's close. They got a whole second half to play. But if you were in Northeastern's pits right now, Pando, you know, you've led teams to, you know, higher levels of this tournament. You guys, did you, you never win one, right? We got second. We got close. Yeah, that's pretty close, though. Yeah. That's admirable. So right now you're down two. You're in the pits. What are you saying to them? Well, they need to talk to each other and tell their coach, hey, nothing is working on the Dorito side right now. I mean, they've, they, what do they lose? Three bodies off the Dorito side just trying to get out there? Almost every point, seems like. So either they need to push the snake harder and just go heavy snake, heavy center, or they need to just play, just make it out there alive. You know, dive in your bunker, count to 10, don't come out yet. Because a lot of times what people do is they, they try to be too aggressive and they get chopped up. And also Northeastern is getting kills off the break. Right. So I would go to my, I'd go to my shooters and I'd say, look, I need you to get that kill for me. Please kill us, kill us one, and we'll do the rest. Yes. You know, because you get that first body to drop, gives you that momentum, you're able to make those moves. And if you, know, if you lose a body off the break, that's 20% of your firepower. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want to be able to try to get those. Now, in that lane, it's so hard to get. You want to whip your gun around and, and shoot as accurately as, as possible, and you're shooting at a moving target. So, you know, it's not a, it's a tall order, but, you know, that's what they need to do. And here they go, playing aggressive all the way up in that center, realizing they only have 40 seconds, doubling up the center 50. The refs are getting in there and checking them out. Got to be careful because if he's playing with the hit, penalty is going to be called. So yeah, penalty is called. So penalty on Northeastern and bodies are dropping for them. They also lose another player. But look at this. Akron drops the ball and there's still one player left alive though. Oh, going to be good. Does he see him? No. Look at this. Does a little rope dope on him. Bam. Ooh. Drops the hammer and hangs the flag with point. just eight seconds remaining. So great point by Northeastern with the penalty. Still able to take to get that win. Yeah, that was Kyle Daney in there. Ooh, Kyle Daney getting it done, man, for the Huskies. And let's check it out here on the replay and see he gets that shot in, doesn't realize there's one player left alive, then realizes it, dips to the side, and then drops the hammer. A little gangster bunker move right there for the win. It looked pretty. That's how it's done. You want to score quick points. And the crazy thing was they got a penalty. They had, yeah. they had three bodies, one die almost immediately, two out of the center off that penalty. But it didn't look like Akron kept their heads, because when you're in those, when you're in a, a low, a high body, we have more players than you left alive. So a high body situation, low on time, mm -hmm. you just gotta watch those zones, keep your head on a swivel, because you know they're gonna be attacking, and they just, you know, Akron not keeping their head on a swivel. Let's check it out from a different angle here. So look at this, and he switches sides. Uh, worst time to switch sides, and he just yeah. locks up there, completely commits to the snake side. I almost wish he wouldn't have picked him up so we could have seen <laughs> the Akron guy just stitch him. Well, it's always, wa it's always fun to watch guys shoot each other point blank. Oh, yeah. But, wow, so we are heading to halftime here. The score, just one point separates these two teams. Akron, four. Northeastern, three. Northeastern, though, on the comeback. And we're going to be right back here with the second half. Don't go anywhere.
All right, heading into the second half of this competition, and we're looking at Northeastern taking on Akron. We got ourselves a one-point game here. Panda, what do you think we're going to see here in the second half? Well, definitely some aggressive snake play from Akron, especially now that they're going right-handed into the snake, so snake off the break. Hopefully for Northeastern, keeping those lanes consistent, but they seem to like to push the center too, so I wouldn't be surprised to see another move up to the center, right? Eh? Yeah, all the action so far on the snake side and in that center. And it looks like we have the third member of our broadcast team, Kristen. Kenny, Kristen, what's going on down there? Guys, Akron, man, they are dehydrated. You look at Josh Boytush. He's out for a little bit, taking a breather. He threw up in his helmet, so uh, that's lovely. Um, but they're just reinforcing hydration, hydration. So this Florida heat's definitely getting to him. God, already? That is, that is, that is <laughs> hey, Pando, you know about throwing up in your mask. You know, when you're a front snake player, sometimes you just, you do a great move, and then you got to get the bat out. That's what it is. He's just letting his demons you, out. Yeah, you exercise the demon on the field, and then the demon still just needs to get out, so you just got to, you know, just puke a little bit. No big deal. He'll be back in there. All right, so here we go. Back out on the field, and it looks like, oh, wow, Akron in really good field position right here, all the way past the 50-yard line. And that is uh, number Greg 88. Patron. Yeah, Greg, Greg Patron. Patron. But his coach does not see the 50 Dorito player. He's really screwed. Like, easy kill for Patron if Coach Mike Gilbert would just recognize a 50 Dorito. Patron is a great name for a college paintball player. Yeah, I'm sure he exploits <laughs> that every time he goes to the bar. <laughs> All right, so, and in the, uh, man, they're looking good right now. 50 yard line, Dorito and also way past the 50 yard line. But it looks like Patron, oh, wow. So he finally picked it up. Yeah, he finally picked it up. Oh, oh, gets that cross-field shot. So Nailed him. Yeah, Patron able to get the cross-field shot. Very chaotic point here. But looks like Akron able to keep some bodies alive. And I don't, are they looking at anybody right I now? I don't think there's anybody over there. No. Come on, coach. What are you doing? Yeah, the coach has got to let him know what the body count is. Oh, he's in the Dorito. Oh, he's Bounce. hiding back there in the Dorito, but he ends up getting taken down. So nice job by Akron able to score another point here. Patron and Addy getting it done. Yeah, as the wind is picking up here. That's actually good, though, for the, good the for guy. Voitash. Yeah, for Voitash. <laughs> Maybe it'll blow that puke smell out of his mask. He'll be back. Puke and rally, that's a, that's a college thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> It's an Ohio thing? It, uh, maybe a Midwest thing. We'll <laughs> call it that. But I'm sure, you know, a couple yinglings last night. And yeah, so let's, yeah, let's check out here the replay. 50 yard line Dorito. And he is just, you know, look at that in the red zone. So he made a really good move to get to that spot and take one of the Akron players down, but not able to hide from Patron as he gets that cross field shot and able to keep his head about him. It was good that Patron was able to do that. Get recognize what had happened because he had a player in the 50 yard line drill for a little bit but he listened to his coach and was able to you know get that cross field shot and maintain this lead that they have and push that lead to two so with eight minutes and seven seconds remaining northeastern needs to get something going here to stay in this match well if i were them i would swing some guns over to the snake side i mean obviously akron is going snake heavy every point and northeastern they were shooting people off the break in the beginning so i would put some guys in those center temples and try to get a cross field shot going on the snake side well the way that this field is laid out every year it's different and that's one of the cool things about the game is that you can change the pace and the tempo of the game by the field layout and i really like how this field is laid out it's an it's an aggressive snake and also the middle very playable you know when you're looking at that the, the field right now you have the blue portion of the field and then you have the orange portion, and then everyone's fighting to get into that red zone. So, you know, let's see what Northeastern's going to bring here to this next point. They need to get Voitash back on the field because 
Patron's ribs. I don't know how long he's going to last playing Snake off break. Well, the crazy thing, too, is this is game one for these guys yeah. of a, of a three-day trench early. fight. It's a little <laughs> yeah. it's too early to be puking, guys. Yeah. You know, normally you want the, the puking to set in maybe Saturday afternoon yeah. after <laughs> you played four matches and played 80-something points, but it's only getting hotter after this, too. Yeah, so here we go. Start of this next point. Top hand portion of your screen is Northeastern. Akron, bottom portion. And let's see how many guns up. Three guns up for Northeastern. Let's see if they're able to take any bodies out for Akron. And no, not able to do it. So five bodies left alive. Both teams, but Northeastern makes it in the snake off the break. And let's see if he can get anything done. Yeah, so the Zips looking pretty good here. Five bodies alive, two point lead. Oh, they lose that back player on the Torito side. I swear, it's like there's magnets. It's like there's iron in the paintballs and magnets <laughs> on players' goggles on that Torito side because no one is able to stay alive and get anything done over there with a, with a small exception of that last point. But even right. him, he ended up taking shots cross yep. field. Big move on the Dorito side. Speak of the devil. He's in the 50 Dorito, made it clean. Yeah, but let's see if he can stay alive in there. That's been the big problem. The referee yep. getting in there and checking him out. If he's clean, it's going to be a big help to the aggressive push here as Northeastern tries to get back in this matchup. Seven minutes and 15 seconds as the clock's starting to dip down. Roberts in the snake for Northeastern. But right now, you're looking at the line for Akron. Oh, Akron just got chopped up. I think Northeastern's going to take this yeah, point. Big move on the snake side. Look at this. Roberts all the way down, getting a quick kill here. He was pretty nice. He could have been a lot meaner with that bunker move right there. Well, I think he wanted to assure that he stayed alive. I mean, yeah, when you when you bunker somebody, you do want to put the, f the fear into him. But at the same time, you want to win the points. So let's take a look at this replay here. Awesome job. And as the move is made by Northeastern, gets that shot quickly on him as Roberts, streaking the field, keeps his gun up, ready for anything, makes it all the way to the back line. And that's all he needed to do. So Roberts played good that point. Made it in clean, stayed alive, bunkered the last guy. Good job. Well, that's what Northeastern needs. They're going to need more of that here as they're still down one point here, a score five to four in favor of, of the Zips. But a lot of game to play. You know, I mean, it's it's anyone's match at this point. This is a really close game here. That's what's great about College Paintball, Matty, is that, you know, it's not a race to five, it's not a race to seven. You get to play a lot of points. Yeah, exactly. So full on 20 minutes in these games. And, man, we're going to be right back after this. Do not go anywhere. ANS Gear rocks the largest inventory of any paintball retailer. From our massive selection of guns to our endless supply of goggles, ANSGear.com can supply your every paintball need. We have a large selection of paint in stock and the best loaders on the market. Our huge inventory of jerseys and pants ensures that we have sizes for all different types of players. Don't forget we also carry the highest quality paintball tanks. With your choice of free shipping on orders over $100 to next day, Saturday, or international shipping options, you get the products you need sooner. Shop now at ansgear.com. All right, we are back here, NCPA College National Championships, and we're watching the University of Akron Zips take on the Northeastern University Huskies. Matty Marshall alongside Pan David Pando. So Pando, what do you, who's been your favorite player out here so far? Who's impressing you? Well, I, Roberts from Northeastern definitely impressed me last point. Uh, I think uh, I know Josh Lehman from Akron. He's captain of the team, and I know he's been holding it down, keep everyone's heads level. Um, I want to say Greg Patron stepping up for Josh Voitush. Um, you know, really making a presence in the snake despite his bruised rib cage. Yeah, well, that's big. But hey, like you said, you only get one chance to do this. There's only one national championship for these college guys. They play a whole season, but at the same time, this is the tournament that really counts. This is where, you know, we're webcasting it. We're going to be on CBS Sports Network. And I'll tell you what, man, it's uh, it's important for these guys. You know, they work so hard, keep these programs together, keep their skills up. And also, don't forget, tell your friends, May 18th, noon Eastern time on CBS Sports Network. Check your local listings. That's when the final of this tournament is going to be aired and man I can't wait and obviously I really think the favorite you got to say Cal State Long Beach they for sure are the favorite here they're defending national champions and they still have their two stars returning Chris Treegarthen and Corey Bornstein so they're going to be playing four o'clock this afternoon man 
I can't wait to see what those guys are going to bring. They had such an amazing event last year. But I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of th these two teams. So you're saying Tennessee, you think, is going to be the other favorite in this in this tournament right now? I, th I think so. I, I'm, my prediction, I haven't, you know, I don't know how the brackets can line up, but I would say Cal State, Tennessee for the final. Yeah, so that would be an awesome matchup. Tennessee, a perennial favorite in this event. And just a few seconds to go before the start of this next point here. And we've, it's been all snake side, all center, which is actually really good because you know typically the snake side, the more aggressive side of the field, now it depends on the layout, but with this layout, we really haven't seen a lot of guys get shot getting to the snake after, off the break. We've seen big dynamic moves on this side, getting past the 50 yard line on the break. And so with that being said, all these other teams are watching this field play out here in these first games, and they're gonna see what's working, see what's not working. What's not working is the Dorito side. It's been <laughs> yeah. dead over there. We've seen just a few moves compared to the multitude of big moves over here on the snake side of the field. And here we go, start of this next point here. I'd like to see Akron go up the center. They haven't done it yet. Yeah, you definitely want to switch it up. They've been going heavy snake, and if you've been doing the same move, let's see Definitely if Northeastern, uh, Northeastern not able to get any sort of shot in. Boy Touch is getting to work. See, the puking rally, he's back. He's yeah. ready to go. Yeah, all the way into the red zone right now, but looking at five players left alive for Northeastern. He just needs to hang out, stay alive, and let his other boys go to get to work on the Dorito So side. now Boytosh all the way past the 50-yard line. Just needs to play smart in here. Don't get crazy. Guns are starting to shift over to him. Now let's see if his boys behind him can get something done. Maybe push up on that Dorito side. Oh, but Boytosh. On. See, that's a rookie mistake right there, and he yells at his coach immediately. But when you get into a really good spot like that, just chill out for a little bit. You really don't need to go to work right away unless you feel absolutely no pressure. If you went into that move head up and you know it's in front of you and you know you can quickly get up and get a shot, then do it. But if you are your head, if you've made that move head down and you're not sure, you gotta wait, listen for your coach, start telling you what's going on. And then because this is what's happening now, is it Northeastern now taking control of the snake side? Right, well, you know, even just putting your gun down the wire, making sure somebody make, they might make a sloppy move coming into the snake, but just getting in there and staying alive is still valuable. Even if you're not shooting people, you're drawing guns. Exactly, and that is being a productive member of the team. Yes. If you're drawing guns, you are still doing your job, because then if everyone's shooting at you, it's gonna allow your teammates to move up. And looks like Akron getting, just getting too many bodies shot out of the bunkers for no reason, and only one player left alive, and he is gonna get taken out. So here comes Northeastern. Starting to get back on the board. Yeah, they did a great job, and I believe we have a tie game now. Good job, Northeastern. Yeah, so Northeastern kind of doing the little twirl, doing the dance out there. He's <laughs> waiting for one of his buddies to come and check him out, because if you hang that flag and you have a hit on you and it's a dirty hang, then, well, that doesn't count. So you want to make extra careful sure that you do not have any hits on you, and, and, and it looks like the point is going to be good. The hang is clean. Yeah, you know, I really like to see, I really like to see Akron go up the center and try to capitalize on Northeastern's being more conservative on the snake side. Yeah, so we got ourselves a one-point game. Still enough time for Northeastern to get back into this matchup here. Oh, actually, it's tied up. Tie you know? game, yeah, yeah tie game at five-five. So. So we have, wow, okay, well, it's tied up now. Who are you feeling, Maddie? I don't, I was gonna ask you the same question, <laughs> man. I'm gonna have to go with Akron. Yes. But because the issue, though, is that you get the penetration over here on the snake side, you just need to do your job in there. Don't get too greedy, and that's what happened to Voitash, is he just got a little too greedy in there and came up too early. Now, if he can do that same thing again, because he's been getting in here no problem. Mm -hmm. So spin him again, get him out on the field, get him into his spot, and just, Make sure that he does his job, stays alive in here, and then start to get some penetration in that center and then that Dorito side. Like you said, we really haven't seen them go up in the center too mm -hmm. much. So that's what they need to do. So, you know, as far as momentum is concerned, Northeastern, obviously, with the win on that last point, they have the momentum. And, but I just think Akron's playing a little bit better. I agree. But at the same time, momentum is everything in paintball. And if they don't start to focus and, and really, you know, realize that they could lose this match at the drop of a hat. They really need to step up in these next few points if they want to get this win. Yeah, so we're going to find out here shortly as the team starting to take the field. Big Winstead out there coming out for Akron. Ready to drop some paint. Let's see if he can get a kill off the break. Yeah, Northeastern, yeah. they look confident. Yeah, well, let's check out this replay here. One of those last kills. Um, yeah, so it's the thing, though, Pando, is that 
st steal the momentum. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do at this mm -hmm. point, particular point. All right, here we go. Start of the, what could be the last point. We'll see how long it goes. And up the middle. Oh, oh so. Patron taking the walk. Yeah, Patron's taking the walk. Is Akron losing bodies here off the break? Losing three bodies is not looking good for them. Northeastern getting chopped up a little bit too. Ref in there. Just a leisurely dive into the snake. No big deal. Yeah, so. And uh, it's just Northeastern getting chopped up, dying out of their bunkers. Man, they had it. They had it, man. We've Maddie. seen a lot of that this morning so far here at the beginning of this competition. And so a lot of tightening up needs to happen. So it looks like Kenny into Snake 2 for Northeastern in real good field position, though they've been dropping bodies. The advantage is definitely on Northeastern side right now as they're in that orange zone, trying to get to the red zone. Moves being made by Akron on the Dorito side, though, all the way to the 40-yard line. Dorito in the red zone, and he's going to try to drop in a cross-field shot on Kenny, who I don't think has picked him up yet. Yeah, he, he's got the ball right now. If he can get a shot on, on someone, him and Addy should be able to close it out. And then now, Northeastern spreading the field. That's exactly what needs to happen. Yep. You can't get trapped on one side. You know, paintball is a game of angles, and the further you advance up the field, the better the angles you get. And with Akron making moves on that Dorito side, finally, it's good that Northeastern decided to spread the field out. The Northeastern player over there, though, he he's just waiting for the Akron guy in the Dorito to make a mistake here. I don't know if the Akron guy knows that he moved to that next tower. Oh, but the Huskies dropping a body out of his bunker as Kenny gets shot. Okay, don't be sloppy, guys. You can take it. See if Addy can close this game out for Akron. You know, and if you're sitting there dissecting these games, we've seen so many opportunities blown by guys getting shot out of their bunkers like that for no reason. Yeah, that's that's college paintball. But we also see some crazy aggressive moves too. That's yeah, that's fun. the one thing I do like to see is that the, on every team you got a couple fearless guys that dictate the pace of the game. Yes. And then the penalty uh, from early on Ooh, at this point. Here we go, one-on-one -on -one for the no, win. No, no, it's two-on-one -on -one because Northeastern got their uh, guy out of the box for the penalty. Out of the box. Oh, and it looks like the referee. Great move by Akron, who shoots the guy trying to get him. Now we do have a one-on-one, -on -one, a true one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, so this, the, this is a big point. This is this is for all the momentum right here. We're in the match. Oh, yeah, so and we're definitely coming down on time here. Yeah, so only two minutes left right now, Pando. Two minutes, this could be, one this, on could one. Be, this could be the game. Oh! This is what it's all about. Oh, so the last player left alive for the Huskies takes a Cyclops right in the center of his goggles. And so yeah, that was a great move by Akron taking the win. But there's still time left, Maddie. They could they could come back. Hey, so could come back. Hey, props to Ben Carpenter. So with just two minutes left in this match, Ben Carpenter steps up here and able to get that one-on-one -on -one victory. Let's check out this replay. Yes. Oh, so look at that last kill there. Just takes one right to his face. Is Carpenter able to drop that shot in? And it's tough, though. When you're in the box, a lot of times you see this a lot. Guys will be in the penalty box, and then they come out, and they're not in the rhythm of the game. Mm -hmm. They come out, they're a little, a little jerky with their movements. They're trying to all of a sudden get back, and they're also angry at themselves because they had you know, been assessed a penalty, so they're trying to help their team out, get right back in the matchup. And a lot of times, you see it a lot. The guys will come out of the box, and then they're playing a guy who's been playing the whole point. He's in the zone. Mm -hmm. Carpenter was in the zone. He made it all the way to the 50-yard line Dorito for Akron and was able to get that kill. So the score uh, now Akron is it's up by one. Six to five is our score here. And right after we got two minutes left in regulation. These are my favorite points. Two oh. minutes to go. Oh yeah, this is why we watch competitive baseball. Is that when it's close game with just a little couple minutes left and you know guys are trying to dig deep and try to get that win for their university. And uh, next up after this, we're going to have Liberty University Flames taking on the Florida Gulf Coast University Eagles. Next up after that, one of the favorites in this event, University of Tennessee Volunteers, going to be taking on Temple University Owls. So, and then a whole afternoon of competition. UConn's going to be playing, West Point, and our favorites, Cal State Long Beach, man. I, it's it's going to be an interesting tournament here. And every year we come to this, it's, it's fascinating which teams have rebuilt their squads, who've lost their stars, and mm -hmm. it, it fluctuates. You know, sometimes, you know, it, They'll lose all, like when you when you left, you know, or you, you've seen this. Talk yeah. to me a little bit about that. Well, you know, when <laughs> when you have leaders on the team that graduate, it can be the death of a paintball club, which is 
unfortunate. Well, here we go. What could be the last here. point? Just about two minutes left to go here in this matchup. And it looks like five players left alive for Akron. And they are able to get here into the 50-yard line portion of the snake, into snake three. And he's going to try to shoot cross field. But Northeastern also able to get into snake two. So we got ourselves a little snake matchup over here. I like what he's doing, too, the boy touch from Akron, is that he's really he's trying to lock down the Dorito side from the snake. He's not going to get aggressive and get shot like he did last point. And I also really like that Akron shot the center guy from Northeastern off the break. That was exactly what they needed to do. You know he's going to try to get there. And they, they chopped him up. Yeah, and no one really has dominant field position yet. I would say, I mean, obviously, because Akron, oh, here we go. Now Akron making moves to the red zone on the Dorito side. So now they have dominant field position. Let's see if he can get a cross field shot into snake one. Yeah, you know, Northeastern's not really playing as aggressive as they should be. I don't know if they're trying to just outplay him heads up or what their strategy is here. But if they want to win this point in enough time to win the match, they need to get on their horse. They need to get up the center or down the snake. Yeah, so tense moments here as time is really starting to tick off this clock. 45 seconds left to go. If any team right now, oh, move made by Northeastern, barely able to get into the third, third knuckle of the snake, but he gets clipped out. So now Akron in the driver's seat. Ooh, big, almost a big move down the Dorito side. Let's see if Voitush can go to work here. He's gonna get some free kills if he plays smart. I don't yeah. think they're having enough time. Yeah, there's just not enough time left as Akron dominating the last portion of this point here to try to take the victory against Northeastern Huskies. And looks like Flanders. Now Flanders needs to sprint and hang that flag. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. He's gonna try to hang the flag, but oh, it, it looks like he dives in to finally get that last point. I'm glad they did that because margin is everything in college paintball. And the Huskies are just yelling from their pit. They don't think he made it in there in time. So, oh man, the referees are going to get in there checking out Flanders yeah. to see if he was able to get that last point hung. Well, they win the match either way. Yeah, they so win either way. congrats to Akron. <laughs> but like you said, so explain the point differential. So what happens is a lot of times if a team goes, you know, in the preliminary round, which is today, if a team gets two wins and one loss, and another team has the same record, it comes down to those point margins. It comes down to the team, the team that wins 10 to one is gonna move on in favor of the team that won five to four. So getting every point, every flag hang possible is very important in college paintball. If you wanna make Sunday, you never know what's gonna happen and every point counts. Well, that's the cool thing about the way that this is structured. Mm -hmm. but let's, but before we get into that, let's, let's take out this replay right here. See if he hangs this here in time. It's just tough to tell. That's why we got referees <laughs> down there. But, you know, Flanders able to get it done. And, and that last minute aggressive push by Akron was able to get, you know, that, that flag hang. So good job, though. We have to get our hats off to both these teams in this really close match. But, you know, Akron is uh, able to, to squeak it in the victory here. So their Class A debut, successful. Yeah, and that's got to be a, a proud moment for them to start off this tournament with a win. Yes. You want to get that mental momentum on your side early on, especially as you start to, you know, have to, you know, you get exhausted and get beat up as the tournament progresses. So to, to get that early victory here in the Northeastern, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure it out, though. But it was a close match, you know, very evenly matched teams here. Yeah, they played good. Um, congrats to Akron, though, TPA, getting that monkey off their back and starting off the, with a strong win against Northeastern. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be an awesome matchup, or um, um, the next game is gonna be an awesome matchup, but we got great paintball coming at you for the rest of today and tomorrow and Sunday. It's the NCPA National Championships. Next up gonna be the University Liber Liberty, or Liberty University Flames taking on Florida Gulf Coast University Eagles. And we're gonna be back, do not go anywhere.